It took some extra effort, but Michael Dukakis finally makes it into town. You'll hear why he's come to Pittsburgh two months before the Pennsylvania primary. The woman who claims to have spent time with Jimmy Swaggart can't get her story printed because she didn't pass a lie detector test. Pittsburgh prepares for a royal visit from a charming prince. Plus, highlights from the Panther went up at UConn. And a sunny Sunday forecast to wrap up your weekend. Good evening, I'm Beth Dolinar. And I'm Tom Randall's Action News is next. Channel 4, WTAE-TV in Pittsburgh. This is Action News. The man who leads the pack of Democratic presidential candidates came to Pittsburgh tonight to start working on a win in the Pennsylvania primary. It is Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis, and it took some doing for him to get here. He campaigned this morning in Atlanta and then got onto a chartered flight, but the plane blew out a tire on the runway in Atlanta. He had to get a commercial flight to Pittsburgh. He is a little angry about the tire, but he arrived here safely. Dukakis spent much of the evening then at a rally at the St. George Ukrainian Catholic Church on Pittsburgh's north side. He is seeking delegates for the Democratic National Convention in Atlanta this summer. This is the third time Dukakis has been to Pittsburgh, but he is the first of the Democratic candidates to visit our city in recent weeks. It was about 9 o'clock when Dukakis landed here in Pittsburgh. In coming here, he is about two months ahead of his competition. The Pennsylvania primary is still two months away. It's on April 26, but Dukakis says this state will be important to the outcome of his campaign. And he has some ideas about what the issues here will be. Strength and the experience and the leadership to build a strong economic future and good jobs at good wages for the people of Western Pennsylvania. And there are lots of very impressive things that are already happening here in Pittsburgh and in Western Pennsylvania. But you need a president who will provide you with support and some resources and who understands how you do it because he's done it. Dukakis has already been endorsed by Pittsburgh Mayor Richard Caligiuri, who says he likes Dukakis because he's the only Democratic candidate who has managed a large government. And Dukakis had to let off a little bit of steam during a debate in Atlanta. He lashed out at Tennessee Governor Albert Gore for never, ha never having run a government. And Dukakis criticized Richard Gephardt for supporting the Reagan tax cuts. And Dukakis is not happy that Gephardt got to deliver the Democratic response to the president's radio speech. Dukakis says now he deserves equal time. But shortly before the debate, presidential candidate Gary Hart laid to rest the rumors concerning the campaign. Now, normally, if you're not winning votes in primaries... Hart admits he won't win the Democratic nomination, but he says that won't stop him from addressing the important issues. Hart says he will stay in the race, ending speculation that he'd drop out. Now, normally, if you're not winning votes in primaries and delegates, uh, what you do is get out of the race. And normally, that's what I would do, um, because I understand the political process, I think, about as well as anyone. But I don't think these are normal times, and I think there is a role to be played by someone who has been seeking the presidency for a while and has spent the better part of the last decade trying to redefine the policies domestically and internationally for my party. Hart says he will continue to make speeches and participate in debate, but he says he'll have to keep a close watch on his finances, and when the campaign becomes counterproductive, he will drop out. Republican presidential candidate Pat Robertson said today that God has forgiven Jimmy Swaggart for his confession of sin of moral failure. Robertson held a news conference today during which he expressed his support for Jimmy Swaggart. Swaggart endorsed Robertson's presidential candidacy a year ago. Robertson said today that he hopes to see the TV evangelist back in the pulpit soon. The National Enquirer says it will not publish a story on Jimmy Swaggart as told by prostitute Deborah Murphy because she failed a lie detector test. Murphy is trying to sell her story to the highest bidder, but the weekly tabloid says it's not buying. At this point, no one is sure what effect, if any, the newspaper's refusal to publish Murphy's story will have on Jimmy Swaggart's future as a TV evangelist. National Enquirer editor Paul Levy said the paper decided not to run the story for the following reasons. Deborah Murphy had been arrested more than a dozen times in three states. She was an admitted drug user, and she failed the lie detector test, and there was no way we could responsibly run the story. 
Later, the 28-year-old prostitute said I had been doing crack and cocaine just the day before. I felt strung out when I took the test. Murphy said, in fact, I had problems remembering some of the questions. The vice president of the Louisiana Polygraph Association feels the supermarket tabloid may have made a mistake by letting Murphy take the test knowing she had taken drugs the day before. Even if a person has not had sufficient sleep, in most cases, we couldn't give a test to somebody. The body wouldn't just, just would not react normally during the test. The National Enquirer refused to identify the person who gave Murphy the lie detector test, but said he has 15 years of experience in the New York City Police Department. Murphy said she's willing to take another lie detector test to prove she had intimate relations with Swaggart, whose secret sex life came to light after the church was given pictures of the TV minister and Murphy outside a New Orleans motel. Just where is Panama's deposed president? Those who know will not say, and those who don't know would like to know. Eric Del Valle has escaped a house arrest and is said to be hiding somewhere in Panama tonight. Police had posted plainclothes guards at Del Valle's home to keep him inside. That was in response to Del Valle's effort to fire military leader Manuel Noriega, who had been indicted in the U.S. on drug charges. Those close to Del Valle believe he fled from his house just before agents loyal to Noriega arrived. Despite Secretary of State Schultz's attempts to plant the seeds of Mideast peace, they have yet to spread. Out. Schultz left Jordan and Syria today with an air of disappointment. Leaders of the Arab states have rejected Schultz's idea to speed up negotiations for Palestinian self-rule. Syria and Jordan insist any such talks must include the PLO and the Soviet Union, while U.S. policy rules out dealing with the PLO. In Israel today, about 300 demonstrators marched in support of Schultz's peace effort, but violence in the occupied territories continued as well. Officials report that three more Arabs were killed by Israeli soldiers this afternoon. Pittsburgh is preparing for a very distinguished visitor. Prince Charles of Wales will be in town this Friday and Saturday to attend the Remaking Cities Conference. This will be the prince's first visit to our city. An international group of urban planners is already here preparing a study that will be used during that conference. Stu Emery reports that the team got an earful today from residents of the Mon Valley. The 17 members of the study team came here to listen, and they got their money's worth. More than 100 residents of steel towns in the Mon Valley were on hand for a town meeting, and the picture they painted for the visitors was not pretty. We're talking about putting money in the facility to tear them down. Construct, let's stop destructing. Why don't you direct government to start helping people, putting them back to work in the facility that have already been Others thanked members of the team for coming and hoped they would turn things around in the Mon Valley. I just sincerely hope that you as a team can, can bring together all the community leaders and the different facets and bring our community back to the Mon Valley and the Mon Valley and the Mon Valley. Several members of the team are from England and said they were pleased that their prince would be here to take part in the Remaking Cities Conference next week. I think he's a very great man, actually, because I think he's one of the leaders of our country who perceives the problem of the community in a very clear way, whether it's in London or, more particularly, the problems of the industrial cities of the north. Others who came to the meeting said they were pleased to learn that fresh eyes were looking at the problems of the Mon Valley. If there was a recurring theme from those who spoke here today, it was a call for leadership, the need for vision, and the need for capital. One speaker seemed to put it best for those who came here when he said, help us find the missing pieces so we can put this puzzle back together again. In Homestead, Stu Emery, Channel 4 Action News. The Prince arrives this Friday, and Action News will provide complete live coverage. We will take you along as the Prince tours our city for the first time, and you can join us for an Action News special report Friday night at 11.30. The Royal Visit right here on Channel 4 WTAE-TV. And the royal excitement is in Los Angeles as well. Today, the Duke and Duchess of York began a 10-day tour of California. Prince Andrew and his wife Sarah, better known as Fergie, were greeted by Mayor Tom Bradley and the USC Trojan Marching Band. They're spending much of their time at the UKLA Festival. That's a celebration of British culture. Later in sports, the Panthers prowl out of Connecticut with a win over the Huskies. And another look at the spectacular skating highlights from tonight's Olympic free skate. But first, Bob, with the wake-up weather. All right, we got a pretty good start tomorrow morning. The sun should be shining tomorrow morning, a bit cold. Temperatures will be in the upper teens. The complete forecast right through the week in a minute. Stay with us.